Hey, thank you for coming by for my daily devotions. It is Christmas Day, December 25th, 2023. And I'm getting these out a little late today because I spent the morning and early afternoon with my family doing Christmas. Our son, his wife, their two kids, my daughter and my wife and me. And then um, my daughter-in-law's dad and his friend. And so we had a great time with them and I hope you had a great Christmas as well. I'm going to do a little catch up and do my daily devotions and make sure they get out today. And I have one other thing that I have to put out today and I put out a bunch of shorts and stuff, uh, short videos. <clears throat> so yesterday we read the first chapter of John and um, the Pharisees were given John a hard time. If you're not the Messiah, well, then who are you and why are you out here baptizing in the desert? Okay. At verse 26 of the first chapter and verse 27 of John. I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. What's he saying to them? He's saying, hey, I'm, I'm here to pave the path for, make the way straight for the Messiah. And the Messiah is Jesus. That's That was his ministry, to make the way straight for Jesus. And you know what? There ought to be a little bit of old John the Baptist in all of us. We ought to be looking for ways to make the path straight for Jesus to come into people's hearts. Let's take a minute and pray. We'll look at the word today. We'll look at 2 Corinthians 9, John chapter 2, Proverbs 24, and Numbers chapter 25. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today. Uh, thank you for Jesus coming into the world. And I recognize that we don't know when exactly Jesus was born, but we celebrate it on uh, Christmas Day, the 25th of December. But what we celebrate, Father, is the Savior of the world coming to pay for our sin at the cross, be raised from the dead to beat death forever and for good, and to take us to be with him in heaven, and to come back and give us a new body and set up his kingdom where we will reign with him forever. Thank you, Father, for Jesus, the King of our lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I got away from it. Now I got to get back to it. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. There is no need for me to write to you about, the serv about this service to the saints. Talk about an offering. For I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year you and Achaia we're ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but hollow, but that you may be ready as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and and finish the arrangement for the generous gift you had promised, then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, who, this is big right here, this is huge. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work as it is written. He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich uh, in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with him <clears throat> and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Then the second chapter of John. I love this chapter, actually. It's, it's uh, Jesus goes to a wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. 
and turns water into wine because the folks ran out of wine at their wedding reception. Why would he do such a thing? Because he didn't want them to be embarrassed for the rest of their life in their hometown. He cared about people. Folks, got to learn to care about people, to love people. John chapter 2. On the third day, a wedding, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. These are big old jars, you know, jugs. <clears throat> Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have served the, saved the best till now. This, the first of his miraculous signs Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee, he thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. There's a series of, of uh, signs and miracles that Jesus does throughout the Gospel of John to affirm that he is the Messiah. Powerful, powerful. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed a few day, for a few days. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. So those who sold doves, he so to to those who sold doves, he said, "Get these out of here! How dare you turn my father's house into a market? It's like it was a." Uh, Oh, what do they call them? Anyway, as a play, turn it into a market, into a, a flea market or something like that. He said, no, nah, this is not the idea. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove that you have authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, answered them destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and are you going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. He's talking about his resurrection. That's what he's doing. After he was, he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for they knew all men. He did not need man's testimony about man, for he knew what was in a man. Proverbs chapter 24. Love the book of Proverbs. Wisdom. We need wisdom from Proverbs and the Psalms. So we read, read through the Psalms, read through the Proverbs, go back and start over again. Stay in the wisdom literature. 24th chapter of Proverbs. Do not envy wicked men. Do not desire their company. For their hearts plot violence and their lips talk about making trouble. By wisdom a house is built and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. A wise man has great power and a man of knowledge increases strength. For waging war you need guidance and for victory many advisors. Wisdom is too high for a fool in the assembly at the gate, he has nothing to say. He who plots evil will be known as a schemer. The schemes of folly are sin, and men detest a mocker. If you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we, will, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will not will he not repay each person according to what he has done? Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. Know also that wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, there is a, is a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. 
if you lie in wait for an for for an outlaw against a right if you lie in wait like an outlaw against a righteous man's house do not raid his dwelling place for though a righteous man falls seven times he rises again but the wicked are brought down to calamity do not gloat over do not gloat when your enemy falls when he stumbles do not let your heart rejoice or the lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from him do not fret because of evil men or be envious of the wicked for the evil man has no future hope and the lamp of the wicked will be sh snuffed out. Fear the Lord and the King, my son, do not join with the rebellious for those two, for those two will send sudden destruction upon them and who knows what calamities they can bring. There, these also are sayings of the wise to show par partiality and judging is not good Whoever says to the guilty, you're innocent, peoples will curse him and nations denounce him. But it will go well for those who convey the guilt, who, who convict the guilty and rich blessings will come upon them. An honest answer is like a kiss to the lips. Finish your outdoor work and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. That's an important concept. How are you going to make your living? Take care of that first, then build your house. You know, that... First things first, you got to be able to sustain yourself. It's why wisdom, wisdom. Do not testify against your neighbor without cause or use your lips to deceive. Do not say I'll do to him as he has done to me. I'll pay, pay the man back for what he did. I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of the man who lacks judgment. Thorns had grown up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. Numbers chapter 25. Numbers. Chapter 25. While Israel was staying at Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women, who invited them to the sacrifices of their gods. The people ate and bowed down before these gods. So Israel joined in worshiping the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. They got sucked into false worship by sexual immorality with Moabite women. And uh, got to be careful, don't you? The Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of these people, kill them and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's judges, each of you must put to death those of your men who have joined in worshiping the Baal of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them, through the Israelite and into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelites has, was stopped. Uh, but those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. The Lord said, do you think the Lord thinks that idolatry Worship of false gods and sexual immorality is okay? I would think not. This is one place where he makes it obvious. The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites, for he was zealous, as zealous as I am for my honor among them, so that in my zeal I did not put an end to them. Therefore tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a will have will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. The name of the Israelite who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of the Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was put to death was Cosby, daughter of Sur, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. The Lord said to Moses, treat the Midianites as enemies and kill them because they treated you as enemies when they deceived you in the affair of Peor and their sister Cosby, the daughter of a Midianite leader, the woman who was killed when the plague came as a result of Peor. 
Ah, the Lord has spoken. He's not kidding either. Uh, we need to pay a lot of attention to him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking today. Thank you for uh, this Christmas time. Most of all, thank you for Jesus who uh, came to live in this world, die on a cross to pay for our sin, be buried, be raised from the dead, ascend to your right hand to then prepare to come back and take us to be with him in his eternal kingdom forever and ever. We praise you for Jesus, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.